From the company Flying Bear I received this laser engraver and cutter type Laser Man. The firmware of the device is based on Garble, which means that the Laser Man can be controlled via G-code commands. Totally in the spirit of how open is this gadget, Flying Bear follows the rules of Garble's GPL license and offers the source code of the modified firmware for download. The download link is not hidden somewhere but can be found directly on the page with the firmware's binary files, that's exactly how it should be. The laser man comes with the core components already assembled. As always, high resolution photos of the package contents can be found on the website of how open is this gadget. The assembly instructions in English are clearly written and include many self-explanatory illustrations. If you still have questions, there are many high resolution photos of the assembly on my website. Let's first have a look inside the box with the electronics. The plugs on the mainboard are locked in place with glue and the wiring looks quite tidy. The color touchscreen is on a maker base board. An infrared diode serves as a flame sensor with which the laser man is cut off from power as soon as a given threshold is exceeded. The sensitivity of the sensor can be adjusted by a potentiometer. The two stepper motor drivers are soldered to the main board. The processor is type ESP32 with VLAN support. The axes are guided by plastic rollers with ball bearings along the 20x20mm extruded aluminum bars. Backlash in this mechanism can be eliminated with the help of an eccentric nut. The axes are driven via timing bells. The X-axis motor is on the right side of the traverse. By moving this stepper motor, the X-axis belt can be tightened. Both sides of the Y-axis are driven by just one stepper motor. The pulleys of both sides are linked via a round rod. The advantage of this construction is that the two axes cannot get misaligned, even while the machine is switched off. The tooth belts of the Y axis are fixed with screws at the ends of the aluminum bars and the correct tension is simple to adjust. One limit switch for the X... ...and one for the Y axis are available. The laser head moves to the lower left corner when homing is triggered. The working area is 40 times 45 centimeters. If everything is properly adjusted, the mechanics run smooth with almost no backlash. The laser module included in the package works with a wavelength of 445 nanometers. The output laser power is given as about 5.5 watts. The laser is focused by adjusting the height so that the 2mm metal spacer plate just fits between the surface of the workpiece and the lower edge of the protective cover. After switching on, the main menu appears on the well-responsive touchscreen. The connection to my local VLAN works without any problems. If the IP address of the laser man is entered in a browser, the web interface appears with which the machine can be operated remotely.
Data can also be transferred via USB interface. Personally, I find the option of being able to read machine data from a micro SD card the most useful feature. After selecting a file, the laser can be driven to the starting position... ...and after that, the engraving process can be started. Even while a file is being processed, some parameters can be adjusted via the menu. This can be helpful in finding the optimal settings for a particular material more quickly. If the data is transferred via SD card as is done here, the laser man can be conveniently put into operation outside of your walls. When working with lasers, more or less harmful gases are inevitably evaporating and it is best to leave them on the doorstep. Also, the laser man has an air filter, this can only hold back soot particles, the ugly smelling gases are not filtered out. Nevertheless, the filter device is also useful for outdoor use because the extraction of smoke particles minimizes scattering of the laser beam which leads to finer engravings. When the fan is running at full power, you definitely can't ignore it. With a longer extraction pipe, you could place the fan motor outside and blow the exhaust fumes out of the window at the same time. It's definitely worth a try. The bitmap graphic shown here is engraved on wood and processed line by line. The job is finished after about 30 minutes. The next bitmap graphic is engraved on a can. This works with a special mechanism that was also included in the package of my laser man. In order to be able to bring the laser to the required height, I raised the feet with 4 bricks. I know that this can certainly be solved more elegantly. The stepper motor attached to this lathe is connected to the electronics instead of the Y axis motor, which must be done with the machine switched off. This graphic is also processed line by line, after each line the can is turned a little bit. As a next test, I cut through a stack of several layers of 2mm cardboard. The laser power is set to 80%, the cutting speed to 60mm per minute. With these settings, the laser man moves once along the edges of a 6 pointed star. Two layers of cardboard are cleanly cut through which is to be expected with a 5.5W laser module. High resolution photos of the test results can be found on the website of how open is this gadget. The final test is to engrave stainless steel. Here too, the laser power is set to 80%. A test pattern consisting of wavy lines and circles is engraved. The speed is gradually increased from left to right. There are also high resolution photos of the results and further information on the test procedure available on the project page. All information about the Flying Bear Laser Man as well as many photos of the mechanics and the test results can be found on how open is this gadget, have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.